Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, today we're gonna talk about troubleshooting a furnace gas valve. I wanted to expand on our recent gas furnace troubleshooting series by going into each part of the sequence of operation of a furnace. In this video, I'll fill you in on what a gas valve does and why it's important. And also during this video, I'm gonna give you 10 things to check when troubleshooting a gas valve. That's coming up next here on Fox Family Heating and Air. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. First, as a technician, you have to know the sequence of events that occurs for a gas furnace to start up properly. It's really straightforward, and you should have this memorized before you can even consider being qualified to troubleshoot. So you got power to the furnace control board, the thermostat signals the call for heat, the inducer motor kicks on, the pressure switch proves that the inducer motor is operating correctly, the igniter activates, the gas valve energizes, the flame pours across the burners, the flame sensor proves that all the burners are lit, and then the blower forces air through the duct system. When a furnace begins a new cycle, the inducer motor is the first thing that you should see kick on. 120 volts is applied through the wires coming from the control board. This starts the inducer motor for up to 60 seconds before anything else happens. Next, a safety device called a pressure switch activates when the diaphragm inside of it recognizes the suction or the purging action of the inducer motor. Now, this sequence right here is gonna happen in three stages, and even if one step of this doesn't perform right, each part is still gonna do their thing sequentially once the signal is given by the board. So after the board senses the pressure switch and the inducer motor are working, one, 120 volts is given to the igniter, and for some package units, it's actually 240 volts. 24 volts is then given to the gas valve, and then the flame sensor starts detecting if there's a flame or not. The igniter is supposed to come on for a set amount of time, 30 to 60 seconds. And we have a video about that, which will explain much more about igniters. Next, the gas valve opens. The gas that's coming from the utility company or the propane tank in the backyard is free to flow onto the igniter. At the opposite end of the burner assembly, the flame sensor also stands in the way of the flame. The rod, which should be cleaned annually, will heat up and send a millivolt signal down the, to the ceramic base of it and onto the control board. You see, only a certain amount of gas can be allowed to go on through the manifold and onto the burners. The manufacturer of the gas valve determines what it'll be. It's pretty standard though, about three and a half inches water column. The natural gas coming from the street is somewhere between seven inches and 10 inches water column, but the gas valve itself specifically allows that three and a half inches of water column onto the burners. Some furnaces are different from others, so please check your furnace installation and your service guide for the specifics of your system. This is something you don't wanna be wrong on. The gas valve can be adjusted, and usually the installer of the equipment will dial in the outlet pressures on startup. Because the manufacturer of the gas valve, Emerson, White Rogers, Honeywell, and other makers of valves will usually have it preset to that 3.5 inches water column, some installers forget to do this. We can't depend and assume that the valve is set up perfectly every time. That's why you can have issues with your furnace related to your gas valve because it was never set up right by the installer the first time it was used. Now let's talk about troubleshooting a gas valve. If 24 volts is coming from the board to the gas valve terminals and you don't hear that little clicking noise that the internal valve makes, you could have a bad gas valve. To double check that, take the leads off the gas valve and check there. Got 24 volts? Then something downstream of that 24 volts is not working. What's the next thing that's supposed to be working? The printed circuit board or the electronic solenoid attached to the gas valve isn't telling the valve to open or that gas valve board is telling it to open, but the valve is stuck somehow. If something's wrong with the internal components of the gas valve, it should be replaced. The gas valve cannot be repaired in the field. Only the gas valve manufacturer or someone certified by the manufacturer of the gas valve can make these repairs. I've seen some videos where people will literally take a wrench and bang on the gas valve to get it to open up. This is extremely dangerous. Gas is nothing to play around with. But if you do decide to try this and it does kick on, please replace the gas valve now rather than later. 
If we try to fix these things ourselves and something goes wrong with the gas valve and it somehow caught the house on fire, the investigation could come back to the furnace. If they wanted to know who worked on it last and what was done to it, the manufacturer of the gas valve could claim innocence and the homeowner's insurance could deny the customer's claim. I know that sounds a little drastic, but it could happen. And why put yourself in that situation anyways? Here are 10 things that we can check when we think we have a bad gas valve before condemning it. One, check the wires to the gas valve. Are they cracked or frayed? That could mean a couple things. A, you have a really old furnace or something could have scorched the wires. Things like that. Replace the wire and continue your diagnostic. Number two, check the coil at the gas valve. If you check the resistance of the coil by putting your two meter leads on each terminal, and it reads OL, then you have a bad coil. There can be more things involved with that, but let's keep it straightforward here. The gas coming into the valve should be at utility line standards. In my neck of the world, it's around seven to 10 inches water column for natural gas. There's a port on the inlet side to check it. The burner orifices could be plugged. A furnace that has sat for the summer without being run can be the victim of a spider spinning a web inside the burner orifices. Now, that's a tiny spider. I know, but I promise it happens. Take a small piece of thermostat wire and gently poke inside the holes of the orifices attached to the manifold and try to fire up the system again. Number five, the flame might be coming on for a few seconds, but then it shuts off. Is there a dropout of voltage or gas pressure to the gas valve? That's something to check for sure. And you can do that by putting a T-fitting in line with the hose that you hook to your manometer. Check the inlet and the outlet side to see if the pressure is dropping on either side of the valve. Another reason that the flame could drop out after only a few seconds of burning is the flame sensor. If the sensor doesn't detect the flame, the gas valve will be told to shut down by the control board. Number seven, if the flame does anything but shoot directly into the hollow metal heat exchanger, a safety can trip. One safety is the rollout switch. Sometimes you'll get a little part of the flame that kind of drifts off to the left or to the right. This will set the switch off. This doesn't mean remove the switch or bypass the switch. This means fix the problem. Clean the end of the burner assembly nearest the heat exchanger. Rust will sometimes build up on the crossover channels. Use a wire brush and clean it to see if that solves the problem. Then place the burner correctly into the channel. Number eight. The other safety that can cause the system to cut the gas off to the valve is the high limit switch. If the furnace runs for a few minutes and then it shuts off, something could be causing the inside of the furnace to get too hot. The first thing that I would check is to see if the evaporator coil is dirty. I have a great video that shows what a dirty evaporator coil looks like and what it takes to clean it. Another reason that the high limit could open is the blower motor speed could be set too low. Check your installation guide as a reference for where these settings should be. And number 10, check the ductwork too. These last three have all dealt with airflow. If the return duct is crushed, then we'll have low airflow again. Visually check the return duct and feel around it if it looks questionable. If the duct is not perfectly round, then this could be a problem. The furnace is suffocating. What else should we check? Leave me a comment down below to share your expertise. When you're installing the new gas valve, there are a few things to keep in mind. It's a like for like change out, yes, but gas valve leaks are a serious issue. So make sure to use some pipe dope or pipe tape to seal the fitting. Also, don't bend the manifold when you're trying to remove the gas valve or put the new one back on. Use two wrenches to get a proper hold on the manifold and the gas valve. I'd really recommend not over tightening the gas valve to the manifold. You could bend the manifold, but also remember someone might have to get that thing off someday and you'd be creating a tough situation for that tech if they had to come out and service it in a few months. Some guys just get a little over the top and really crank down on it. Not necessary. Check for gas leaks with an electronic sniffer or soap bubbles. This will assure the fittings are snug and leak free. And don't forget to check the outlet side when the gas valve is turned on. It doesn't help when the valve is off because no gas is flowing through it. If it's a natural gas setup, the spring that comes inside the valve will already be the right one. If you're using LP gas though, you'll need to make sure that you put the right spring in it. It'll come in the box. Check the manifold orifices too to ensure that they're the right size for the LP. 
and put the sticker on the gas valve that says LP. This will help HVAC technicians in the future when they have to service the furnace. And lastly, check the gas pressure on the new valve after you've replaced it. I can't say it enough. It's simple to do with the right tools. So don't just change the valve and not check the pressures. On two stage units, there's also a setting for low fire and that also needs to be checked. If the gas pressure is too low, your furnace efficiency will go down. More condensation than normal will build up because the air in the air fuel mixture will be too high. This will cause corrosion, creating a possible heat exchanger replacement in the future. High gas pressure can be just as bad for your furnace because it greatly increases the risk of the furnace overheating. When this happens, high limit switches will start opening, causing intermittent operation. It can also crack your heat exchanger since it's only rated to handle a certain amount of heat. And cracked heat exchangers can also introduce the spent gases inside of the heat exchanger to be carried along with the heat blowing into the house. So just to recap, when a furnace begins a new cycle, the inducer motor is the first thing that you should see kick on. A safety device called a pressure switch activates when the diaphragm inside of it recognizes the suction or purging action of the inducer motor. Next, the three parts of the ignition sequence begin. The igniter kicks on, the gas valve opens, and the flame sensor starts sensing that the flame exists. If all this goes well, you'll have heat blowing into the house about a minute later when the blower kicks on. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.